This question comes from Dennis, who asks, how long would it take for people to notice their weight gain if the mean radius of the world increased by one centimeter every second, assuming the average composition of rock were maintained? Let's imagine the whole Earth, from crust to core, starts expanding uniformly beneath our human structures, which don't expand. To avoid another drain the ocean scenario, we'll assume the ocean expands too. When the Earth started expanding, you'd feel a slight jolt, and then you'd be moving steadily upward at one centimeter per second and wouldn't feel any kind of ongoing acceleration. For the rest of the day, you wouldn't notice much of anything. After the first day, the Earth would have expanded by 864 meters. Gravity would take a long time to increase noticeably. If you weighed 70 kilograms when the expansion started, you'd weigh 70.01 at the end of the first day. With the ground expanding beneath them, how fast would our roads and bridges fail? Well, not as quickly as you might think. Here's a puzzle I heard once. Imagine you tied a rope tightly around the Earth so it was hugging the surface all the way around. Now imagine you wanted to raise the rope one meter off the ground. How much extra length would you need to add to the rope? Miles? Hundreds of miles? The answer is about six meters. Circumference is proportional to radius, so if you increase the radius by one unit, you increase the circumference by two pi units. After one day, the 40,000 kilometer circumference of the Earth would increase by 2 pi times 864 meters, or 5.4 kilometers, which is about 0.01%. And that'd be handled easily by virtually all structures. Concrete expands and contracts by more than that every day. One of the first real effects you'd notice would be that GPS satellites would stop working correctly. The satellites would stay in roughly the same orbits, but the incredibly precise timing and synchronization between ground stations and satellites would be ruined within hours. Most other clocks would keep working fine. However, if you have a very precise pendulum clock, you might notice something odd. By the end of the day, it would be three seconds ahead of where it should be. After a month, the Earth would have expanded by 26 kilometers, an increase of 0.4%. Surface gravity would also only have gone up 0.4%, even though the Earth's mass would have increased by 1.2%. Surface gravity is proportional to radius, which is because as the planet grows, it gets more massive, but you also get further away from the middle. You wouldn't notice this difference in weight even using a scale. Human body weights vary by much more than 0.4% over the course of a day, let alone a month, and gravity itself varies by this much between different cities. What you would notice is the expansion. You'd see lots of cracks opening up in long concrete structures and the failure of elevated roads and old bridges. Most buildings would probably be okay, although those anchored firmly into bedrock might start to behave unpredictably. After a year, gravity would be 5% stronger, and the ground underneath structures would have expanded by 5%. You would probably notice the weight gain, and you would definitely notice the failure of roads, bridges, power lines, satellites, and undersea cables. Your pendulum clock would now be ahead by five days. After five years, gravity would be 25% stronger. If you weighed 70 kilograms when the expansion started, you'd weigh 88 now. Most of our infrastructure would have collapsed. The cause would be the ground expanding by 25%, not the increased gravity. Surprisingly, most skyscrapers would hold up fine under much higher gravity. The limiting factor isn't weight, but shear forces like wind or the ground expanding. After 10 years, gravity would be 50% stronger. We'll assume the atmosphere is expanding too. Otherwise, there wouldn't be enough to cover the growing Earth, and the air would by now be getting too thin to breathe. With an expanding atmosphere, surface air pressure would rise due to both increased gravity and more air, but we'd be okay for a little while longer. After 40 years, Earth's surface gravity would have tripled. At this point, even the strongest humans would be able to walk only with very great difficulty. Breathing the thick air would be a challenge. Trees would collapse, and crops wouldn't stand up under their own weight. After 100 years, we'd be experiencing over 6 Gs of gravity. Not only would we be unable to move around to find food, but our hearts would be unable to pump blood to our brains. Only small insects and sea animals would be physically able to move around. On top of that, at somewhere around this point, even ordinary air becomes toxic due to higher oxygen levels. Perhaps humans could survive in controlled pressure chambers by keeping our bodies horizontal and tended to by robots, but this is about as far as we're going to make it. Would the Earth eventually become a black hole? It's hard to answer that, because the premise of Dennis's question is that the radius steadily expands while the density stays the same, whereas to make a black hole, the density increases. Under realistic physics, by adding more mass to the Earth, we would eventually exceed the strength of the chemical bonds to withstand the growing internal stresses, and the Earth would contract rather than expand, collapsing into something like a sputtering white dwarf star held up by electron degeneracy pressure. Then, after around 1,500 years of expansion, if the Earth's mass kept increasing according to the original premise, after 1,500 years, the Earth would pass the Chandrasekhar limit for white dwarf stars and become a black hole. But before it gets that far, it's a shame humans wouldn't survive 300 years because at this point, something really neat would happen. 
As the Earth grew, the moon would, like all our satellites, gradually spiral inward. After several centuries, it would be close enough to the swollen Earth that the tidal forces between Earth and the moon would be stronger than the gravitational forces holding the moon together. When the moon passed this boundary, called the Roche limit, it would gradually break apart, and the Earth would, for a short time, have rings. 